Um, and that has been blown up into some kind of bloodbath that was, or, or that I had paid these patients to come to the Royal Free to be part of some litigation in order to bring down the vaccine manufacturers. Nothing, nothing could be further from the truth. Another allegation is, and this occurred yesterday on uh, Good Morning America, is they put up a clip of a family who accordingly, according to, apparently according to my research, did not give their children the Haemophilus influenza B vaccine, the Hib vaccine. Now, I've never said a single word about the Hib vaccine. I've never mentioned the Hib vaccine. My work was related to the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine. And now they're blaming me because parents have not given their children the Hib vaccine. I mean, that is the most contrived piece of journalism I have seen in a long, long while. It's straw man. They don't attack Andrew J. Wakefield. They attack this made up creature that they then tear apart for the world. Yes, it reminds me of that Disney film, you know, Beauty and the Beast. A scene, kill the beast, kill the beast. This is like Salem, a visceral response that they're trying to whip up in the public to try and crush this dissent, to try and stop valid vaccine safety research taking place is completely out of proportion and is not doing any service to the American people or indeed the children of the world. Well, how much do Western vaccine makers make a year? I've seen numbers of eight, ten billion dollars. I mean, do you think they're going to let research doctors start actually showing the carnage that they've caused? Do you think they're going to let anyone get in the way of that business? I mean, look at the ads. Probably half the ads on network TV are drug companies who have their vaccine divisions. And so it's a complete conflict of interest for all of these networks that are savaging you. They're on the payroll. Yeah, there is a big problem here. One is that they are allowed to advertise directly to uh, the consumer. That doesn't occur in the UK, but giving, giving the, you know, get to ask your doctor about this drug, getting it out there, they begin to own the, the, um, the uh, broadcasting companies. They own the TV companies because they uh, depend upon their advertising. They even make up stuff like restless leg syndrome, which is now admitted to be a fraud. I mean, they just make things up and engage in pure quackery. And then you, a prestigious, you know, doctor doing research, you're the bad man. But, but they've got a problem. In fact, we can put this up on screen. London Telegraph, uh, uh, government tells doctors don't give a uh, flu shot after tenfold increase in fits. And then that means in England, seizures. The next line says tenfold increase in seizures in under fives. And then they found, oh, it's boys particularly again. Something's happening with boys. They're having these seizures. Now, now uh, Australia came out and said, yeah, we had deaths because of this H1N1. That's their own government having to admit it and suspending it. Uh, Poland suspending it. They had deaths of the homeless, 30 plus just in the test of a bird flu vaccine. I mean, something's going, and, and, and now the British Medical Journal, I had their head editor on, they found it was all a fraud in 09 pushing that shot. The uh, Wolfgang Wudarg, who was the head of the EU Commission, doctor, he felt, so it seems like you are the sacrificial lamb because they're burning in flames right now. So again, if they can intimidate others by trying to smash you, they win. But it seems to be backfiring. But I mean, your comments on these flotillas of just news coming out. Oh, we, we gave a polio vaccine in Africa. Oh, in Asia. Oh, in Latin America. It was live. It killed people. Oh, the U.S. government secretly was shooting people up with syphilis. Oh, and I mean, you know, all this is coming out. So people are like, ooh, we don't trust you. And they say, it, no, it's all lies. This guy, Dr. Wakefield, he made it up. It's his fault. He did it. But that isn't reality. No, it's not at all. And uh, the problem is so serious and so prevalent that scientists cannot afford to roll over. Physicians cannot afford to roll over in the face of this kind of bullying tactic and not do the work in the interests of their patients. That would be absolutely unacceptable. And that is what I intend to continue doing. And I'm not going to go away. This work has to be done. And I think what we need is the medical profession, the scientific profession to stand up and be counted in this respect. And it it's interesting, I was recently at a vaccine safety conference in Jamaica where experts from all over the world, France, Israel, the UK, the US, Canada, came together to express their mutual concerns about vaccine safety policy. The cost of the, the amount of money invested in vaccine promotion in this country compared with the amount of money spent on vaccine safety research is way out of proportion. Billions compared with a few million. And this is not my word. This is the word of the uh, committee that recommends vaccination policy. The, uh, and they don't like doctors being doctors. They want to let the CEOs of the drug makers 
uh, now engage in, 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 in medical policy. That's what Obamacare does more and more, is it lets you know, bureaucrats set policy and take power from the real experts, the doctors. Yeah. So it's a vaccine safety first priority. Why would you not put safety first? If you're going to administer these vaccines to every child in the world, potentially, safety must be the priority. So Ralph Nader was not anti-car. He was for safer cars. I'm not anti-vaccine. I am for safer vaccines. And that has got to be the priority. Not profit, not bottom line, not policy, but putting the health of children first. There are nearly 30 million children in this country alone who have a chronic immune or inflammatory disorder, which when you and I were young, didn't exist. Well, but very, very rare. Dr. Blaylock, who you know is a prestigious retired brain surgeon, uh, he's done research and he sources all the other research, you know, quoting it on air when he's joined us. But he says, just looking at the brain, it's clear that the adjuvants, the aluminum, the mercury, uh, but the, uh, the, the virus itself, or in other cases, the bacteria itself, is causing, because it's not going through the skin or the mucous membrane the way it's absorbed, it's causing an autoimmune inflammation. And he's saying it's in the guts, it's, it's in other parts of the body, but it's, it's also in the brain. And that's why so often the kids will have a seizure driving home after the shots. I mean, we know that this is going on, and they just try to ignore it, but, but, but now that dam is breaking. Uh, I mean, what do you just, just I mean, you know, I understand you, you're being watched like a hawk, so you don't like to speculate in any way. But clearly, what are the type of inflammations we're seeing that magically pop up after vaccination? Well, there's the sort of thing that we're seeing are asthma eczema, hay fever, insulin-dependent diabetes, uh, autism, neurodevelopmental disorders. Are these linked to autism? Uh, sorry, to vaccines? We're not sure. But is there evidence that they may be? Yes, absolutely. There was one study, a very big study, 11,500 children out of the University of Manitoba, showing that if you just delayed the administration of the DPT vaccine, then you halve the risk of asthma. That's an extraordinary observation. You've just delayed it by two months. You don't have to get rid of the vaccine. Don't the Japanese for like 10 years make them wait to two and a half to give shots? I don't know, but if that's what they do, then that's, a, I, th I believe, a very wise policy. We'll continue with other studies, because I've interviewed like Dr. Eisenstein. He's reported there's hundreds of thousands of Amish in Illinois, and autism is unknown um, amongst them. I, I mean, is there any credibility to that in your research? Well, yes, the fact that the Amish do not vaccinate, except in rare circumstances, and they don't appear to have... Autism. Now, has anyone done a study on that? No. Does it need to be done? Absolutely it does. We need to do a study that compares the long-term health outcomes of fully vaccinated children with those who are not vaccinated. That study has to be done. Parents have every, every right to expect but The vaccine makers fight that. They have been fighting. Mm, wonder why. Mm. But, you know, what's interesting uh, is that they've said that all the science is in, there's no need to do any more, there is no link between, for example, thimerosal, the mercury preservative, and autism. Well, when this has been systematically analyzed and all the papers that are relevant, that generate data, that pre present data, have been looked at, 74% of those papers say, yes, there is a link, a positive link. So what people are being told and what is the truth is very, very different. And one more thing is that the vaccine courts in this country have been settling cases of vaccine-induced autism or autistic spectrum disorder since the early 90s. So you've got one branch of the government, the CDC, saying there's no problem at all, and then you've got the Department of Justice settling these cases. And I can give your uh, readers and viewers, your listeners and viewers some names to look up if they don't believe it. Hannah Poling, Bailey Banks, Misty Hyatt, and Mrs. Hyatt would be delighted to come on your program. I want to get her on. And she would talk about how her daughter was rendered autistic by a, an MMR vaccine and was awarded $5 million. Hannah Poling, just been given a lifetime award of $20 million for vaccines causing her autism. So well, I have friends who've had a you know happy 18-month-old running around talking, giggling, and, they're, and then the kid's just gone. I mean, they might as well have been hit by a chemical weapon after that third round of shots. And it's almost everyone you talk to. I can be at a hotel on vacation. There's a family. You know, they're in the pool, the hot tub. they got three or four kids. One of them's autistic sitting there, you know, nodding in the chair, you know, not having a good time. And I'll say, let me ask, when did your, when did your son... Uh, oh, 18 months, third round of shots. Uh, he had a convulsion uh, on the way home in the car. 
And, and then the, what I've read about is sometimes when they bring them back to the hospital, then they try to take your kid saying, oh, there's inflammation on the brain. You must have beaten them or something. I mean, I mean that's more, even more incredible. It, uh, it, it just makes my head spin. Well, Alex, this is a very important point you just brought up because I am now dealing with cases of Munchausen syndrome by proxy where the children have been damaged ostensibly by a vaccine exposure until proven otherwise, and yet the parents are being blamed for the damage to the children. And more than that, parents are treating their children and reversing their autism to a greater or lesser extent, getting them better. So they lose their autism diagnosis, and then they're being told that they made up the diagnosis of autism in the first place. They were diagnosed by professional doctors. The parents are being told that they made up the diagnosis and that the children never had autism in the first place. And so this is something, this is one of the grossest injustices I've ever witnessed in my life. Your child is initially damaged and you have to suffer and grieve with that and then suddenly you're blamed for causing it in the first place. It's absolutely staggering and that kind of thing has got to stop. I know you can't diagnose people over the radio, but in, in, in individual cases, uh, obviously we aren't, can't conclusively prove what's causing it. It's kind of like if somebody walked out on the road and got run over by a Mack truck and then you walk out and their bodies smashed all over the side of the road. You, a car probably did this, but did we see it do it? No. And there's people out there saying, don't look at cars. Don't, don't, you know. Uh, so that's happening. Uh, but what do we know is is reversing the intestinal problems, what is detoxing them, uh, and, and what do those success stories point towards? Well, good medicine starts with the history, the examination, and the clinical findings. So, from my perspective, it was of gastrointestinal problems which were confirmed to be of an inflammatory nature when we took little biopsies from the intestine. Now, we know a lot about treating inflammation from the years of treating Crohn's disease and colitis. So we had an opportunity here to intervene by treating these children with anti-inflammatories. So the mild anti-inflammatory drugs that were used in Crohn's work very well. These are aspirin-like drugs, but ones which heal the intestine. The diet. The diet has been extremely valuable. This is a gluten casein-free diet. And if there was one thing that I was recomm would recommend that parents start with, it would be the gluten casein free diet. Now people have said for years, oh there's no evidence, there's no evidence, that's just parents making it up or it's dangerous. Actually now there are randomized control clinical trials showing benefit and if anyone wants to look that up the name is Whiteley, Whiteley et al. Look up that paper and you will see a big study showing benefit from the diet. Take it to your doctor, show it to them and use it as evidence-based medicine that the diet is certainly worth trying. So a gluten casein-free diet, and the value of that is that it's in the parents' hands. It doesn't involve giving a drug. And hey, what's it going to lose trying it? I mean, why not try it? Yes, I think that's absolutely right. It's something that the parents can be in control of, and it's something that we have seen produces dramatic benefit. It starts with better sleeping, better bowel function, better behavior, and children can progress and make great strides through that kind of approach. Uh, now, getting back to Crohn's, and, and again, I'm going from memory here, but I remember reading that going back 30, 40, 50 years ago, it was, uh, this disorder was almost unheard of or hadn't even really been invented the name. And now I'm in grocery stores, I'm in restaurants, I've got a couple people that work here who are young. And, and uh, I've read not just some of your research, but other research pointing towards uh, that they find uh, uh, different antibodies connected to the vaccine in the intestines with the people that have Crohn's and Crohn's-like problems, and uh, now moving into irritable bowel that, you know, huge parts of the population. I mean, you're the expert on this. Tell us, tell us about that link. Well, Crohn's is how I really got into this autism bowel link because uh, we had for years been looking at the possibility that Crohn's may be linked to the vaccines. Now, that remains a question. It's out there. The work has been, some has been for, some has been against. But Crohn's is proliferating. Crohn's is, is epidemic. Just like uh, autism is epidemic now, the Crohn's epidemic started um, probably in the 1920s, 30s, 40s. It suddenly started escalating, but it wasn't heard of in children until the mid-60s. In the mid-60s, it appeared in children. I remember the first, one of my, uh, the first cases, uh, uh, in fact, a chap who's come a very good friend of mine, when he was 16, he developed Crohn's, and people used to come from all over the north of England to see him because it was so unusual. Now we see Crohn's in children as young as one and two and three. Now that is extraordinary. So what has happened? Like all of these other inflammatory and immune diseases, it's going through the roof. Why? We don't know the answer, but it certainly needs to be investigated. Something in the environment. 
something in the environment must be doing this because it's not genetics. And if we have tens of thousands of anecdotal parents, kids having convulsions and basically being mildly to seriously, you know, brain damaged after they take shots, gee, you know, that, I mean, I mean, right there. And then you have all these other studies that I've had doctors on about about not the guts, the brain.